What's up everybody and welcome back to Joystick Ayrton. So in our last video, we talked about the MSI Claw, the Intel chipset that is coming along with it, the couple different variants, and just our overall speculation of what is going to happen with that product launch. But we are in a handheld market that has never been this saturated full of products. You have all kinds of different manufacturers from China like GPD and AYN and various more. You have Asus with the ROG Ally, you have the Claw coming, you have the Legion Go, we have the Steam Deck. And when you're stepping into this market and maybe you already have one but you're looking for a second one or you're trying to make a determination on what you want, the insane list of different chipsets can make it hard to wrap your head around. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about all of the mainstream chipsets from the 7640U all the way up to the Z1 Extreme, Intel's different options, and we're gonna go from there. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so this video could be an incredibly in-depth. We're going to skip that. We're gonna dumb this down as much as we possibly can. I'm gonna do a mini series on basically each one of these chipsets. I think that could be like 10 to 15 videos, really going in-depth into architecture, encoding, cache, progression and regression, depending on certain applications. Uh, efficiency. There's so far that we can take this and we're going to do a little mini series with that and I think it's going to be awesome. But the point of this video is to just kind of show the broader scope of the entire handheld market when it comes to the chipsets. And if you don't know what chipsets are, I'm talking about the CPU and GPU on board each one of these handhelds. So for this case, the Legion Go, the ROG Ally, they both have these Z1 Extreme processors. They're the exact same for both of them. The ROG Ally does give you an option for the Z1 model, a cheaper option. We're going to talk about that as well. But this is going to be bare bones, really dumbed down. In a couple of our next videos, we're going to pick a CPU. Probably going to do the Intel-based ones first just because those are coming. It's going to be big to the market. But we're also going to talk about the 8840Us and so on that are going to be in like the AYN devices, the GPD devices coming here pretty shortly. I want to say they're going to ship in March. So if you're thinking about getting into that section of the market, you don't have a whole lot of time to research and really decide what is best for you. So with that being said, we're going to dive in. We're going to talk prices. We're going to talk core counts. We're going to talk just overall generalized performance, put up some benchmarks, things of that nature, maybe show off some gameplay and kind of tell you how we feel about all of them. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. Okay, so I'm going to try and dumb this down really far. You're either a car person or a pizza person. I'm pretty sure you fall into one, one category or the other. Well, if you have a six core CPU and an eight core CPU, so you've got a medium pizza and a large pizza, the large pizza is probably more powerful, the eight core. Or if you have a V6 engine or a V8 engine, the V8 is probably more powerful and it pretty much works the exact same for CPUs, but things get a little different with efficiency and how well things work and power consumption and things of that nature. So when you look at the Steam Deck, which has to be arguably the most popular handheld on the market, at least when it comes to sales numbers, they're running a Zen 2 AMD CPU. Zen 2 is the generation of processors from AMD. It is a four core CPU. It's incredibly efficient. Their battery life comparatively was just off the charts when that first one came out. Then they revised everything and it got even better. So efficiency can be a lot better with a lower end processor. That processor does not stand up in any way to the Z1 Extreme that is in my Lenovo Legion Go or your ROG Ally. But massively different architectures. And that's actually a debatable topic. They're not massively different, but it is a much higher end chip. So with that being said, you lose a couple things. The reason the Legion Go's battery life is close to an hour and a half to two hours is they put a much bigger battery in it to allow you to do that. The ROG Ally, they didn't put as big of a battery in it. That thing will die in an hour, maybe even less depending on what game you're playing. So with that being said, you can keep that in mind if you are absolutely at rock bottom with this kind of stuff. It's a bigger engine, a bigger pizza. It, usually you can kind of put it out that way. So with that being said, my handy dandy list here, we have a bunch of different chipsets across the board. So we're going to talk about most of them in this video. We're going to dabble in them, so to speak. And then in the mini series, we're then going to take them, chop them all up into separate videos and really go in depth with it. So you have the Z1 Extreme. That is what is inside our Lenovo Legion Ghost. That's what is inside our Asus ROG Allies. It is a good chip. It is one of the newest chips and it's really compatible 
pretty much with the 70, uh, 7840U chips. You're going to hear me talk about that chip, the 6800U chips, and the 8800U chips a lot in these videos. Those are constant upgrades every year. Most of the time, there's very little, if any, difference. So keep that in mind. But you have the Z1 Extreme. Um, you can get this typically, depending on an open box ROG Ally, somewhere like $550 at Best Buy, all the way up to the $750 model of the Lenovo Legion Go. That is the chip that is in those. Um, there are cheaper versions of the Ally that have the straight Z1, the non-extreme. You can see these as low as $400 new right now at Best Buy. Sometimes you can see an open box for around $350. It's a really good deal, and it competes pretty heavily with a Steam Deck on a Windows-based version. Performance is a lot closer with the deck on the Zen 2 processor and the Z1 non-extreme, but you are losing a probably 30% performance there compared to the Z1 extreme. It's With Windows, it's a little tricky. Um, but if you're working on a budget and you want a Windows-based handheld because you want to play Game Pass, that might be the best option for you. Um, you have the 7840U. You have the 8840U. You have the older processor, the 6800U. These are quite often in the GPD Win devices, in the AYN devices. They're a processor that is readily attainable from AMD. They're going into these handhelds from the Chinese market. They're good devices. I had a Win 4 and I absolutely loved it. I would like to get another one. There's very little difference. The 7840U and the 8840U are actually the exact same chipset. Down to everything, the little difference is AI capabilities on the 8840U. It's next to nothing. So a lot of things are going to come into play with that. Should you just buy a 7840U if you can get it cheaper? Probably. Um, the 8840U, it's the lifespan. GPD and AYN, they're pushing these devices out so fast that they're dropping support for them like that. The 6800U models of the WinMax 2, the WinMax Mini, uh, the GPD Win 4, they're no longer in support. It's only been like a year and a half. And they're just constantly shoving out those updates. But if you're an enthusiast, if you're looking for something unique, something that does everything a little bit different, the Win 4 is incredible. The Win Max Mini, incredible. The Win Max 2, incredible. So those hit a section of the market that might not be your section, but it definitely plays into a part of it. And those processors, they're very close to the Z1 Extreme, but those three ranges, there's a little performance gap between 6800U and 7800U maybe 5 to 8% depending on the title, but for the most part, they're all pretty much the same. So keep that in mind if you're looking at getting those devices. If you can get like a 6800U Win 4 for 500 bucks in good condition, you feel safe buying that model, go for it. It's going to play pretty much the same as the next version. All right, so then we muddy the waters up a little bit more with the MSI Claw because now we're going to have the Intel-based Core Ultra 7 155H and the Core Ultra 5 135H. Um, things can get a little messy with that too because there's also a 125H Core i5. Those CPUs, we don't have a whole lot of information about them. Architecturally and their processes, the cache, things of that nature, we know a lot about them, but we don't know their outright performance. Now, I do have a slide here. That slide is from Video Cards. I'm just comparing the MSI Claw to the ROG Ally. So this is going to compare the Ultra 7 i7 to the Z1 Extreme and the ROG Ally. And we're talking a really big performance difference. Um, Cyberpunk, max TDP across the board, so you got 30 watts on the Ally, 40 on the Claw. The Claw is hitting 44.8 FPS, the Ally 59.8 FPS. That is a massive difference there. Um, that's low quality 1600 by 900p. That is with FSR on in performance mode. Um, Another thing that this slide does a really good job of showing you is that the Intel chip is terrible at lower wattage. 15 watts, we're looking at 24 frames per second in Shadow of the Tomb Raider compared to the ROG Ally, we're at 42. So massive difference there as well. So what this tells me is a very power-hungry set of chips from Intel. They're not going to be very efficient, and more than likely the performance compared to the Z1 Extremes is going to be 10 to 15%, give or take, depending on the situation. What worries me about that is that is the i7 version of that processor. The i5 is probably going to be below performance, maybe of the non-extreme chip on the Z1. 
that's a big drop off, especially for a handheld that you're trying to sell for $700. The i7 version, I believe the cheapest one is 749. That's a 512 gig model or 799 with a one terabyte model. When we get that here on the channel, we're going to be getting the 512 model to test it out, run it through its paces, and then we'll decide whether or not we want to keep it for anything in the future. So with that being said, let's go ahead and shift just a little bit here. Okay, so now we're going to kind of shift into trying to be as objective as possible. If you're picking something based on a chipset, you've really gone past a whole lot that you should consider in these handhelds. I think the chipset is extremely important when you're making a decision. Are you going to pick a Z1 Extreme device? Are you going to pick a Core i7 device? Are you going to pick a GPD Wins 8840U device? You have these high-end models. What are you picking and why? Maybe you want to sacrifice some performance for X, Y, or Z. Maybe you want something with a full-fledged keyboard, so you're going to go with a GPD device. Maybe you want something with a much bigger screen, so you're going to go with the Lenovo. You're really you're starting to split hairs at this point in time. But if it's coming down to a chipset and to the price, the Intel device seems like it is sinking. It seems like the performance leaks that came out of all of the outlets that got review models in China and in different parts of Asia show it as something that, man, the price is just out of whack. I don't know how they're going to survive it with a performance like that. It might, with the i5 model, hit lower than the Steam Deck at a much inflated price compared to that. It might not be that bad, but it could be pretty darn close because the ROG Ally with the Z1 non-extreme, there's a big difference in performance there. We're talking, uh, it has two less CPU cores, four less threads, and eight less GPU compute units. That is an incredible amount of performance not on the table there. And there's also a giant price difference, almost half the price. You can get a non-Z1 Extreme Ally for 350 bucks the i5 could be in that category at a much inflated price. But we're going to talk much more about its hardware specs, cache, its different architectures, and so on in a later video here, hopefully within the next week, because I want to get those out before we get too close to launch so they're actually relevant to you. Um, but with that being said, the Z1 Extreme is the best hands-down chip in the handheld market right now. The 8840U, they get really close in performance, but you're losing other things. You're losing some efficiency. And the expense is just incredible when you're buying a GPD device. You don't have a return policy if you're here in the States. Like you can go buy one of these from Best Buy, return it if you have any issue or get support if you have an issue like that. But fundamentally, I'm going to rank these for you really quick uh, just so you have an idea of where they all stack up. This isn't stacking up the devices. If you like your ROG Ally better than the Legion, I think you're crazy. But you're entitled to your opinion. Um, but with that being said, the Z1 Extreme is the top chip. It is the best chip performance all across the board in any device. If you are going to pick the best thing you can get, a Z1 Extreme is the way to go. If you want the best efficient chip, the best, I'm going to have the best battery life on the planet, you're going to pick a Steam Deck. The Zen 2 architecture there, the four cores, everything is awesome on the deck. Uh, you can't beat it when it comes to that. Then I'm just going to go from there. The 8840U, it's expensive. Uh, it's a 7840U, it's also expensive. You don't know what kind of support you're going to get from AMD or from GPD. It's a shot in the dark. I would actually pick those below all of the Intel marks. So I would go Z1 Extreme. I would then pick the Steam Deck with the Zen 2. I would then pick the Z1, the non-extreme version, um, just because I know what I'm getting there. We're not 100% sure, but the Core Ultra 7, man, if you don't care about power, and if their battery life is as long as they say, I could see it being number three on the list. So we're going to go with Z1 Extreme. Then we're going to go with the Steam Deck. We're going to go with the Core i7. After the Core i7, we're going to pick the Z1 non-extreme because I think that i5 is going to be hideous. It's going to be down at the bottom. And then we're going to follow that up with the 6800U, the 7840U, and the 8840U. Those are just chips that they're not bad performance-wise. You just don't know what you're going to get in the long run with them. But they're pretty close to performance of the Z1 Extreme. They're not bad chips. It just could be a year from now. There's no support from AMD. There's no support from GPD. You're in a ride of your own, so to speak. And if you're that kind of person that can fix your own stuff and you're, you're all for it and fixing it and wiping it and doing whatever needs to be done, that might be perfect for you. Maybe you prefer doing that stuff more than actually gaming. And on some days, that's what I do prefer. But keep in mind that not just the chipset is important. 
I love my Lenovo Legion Go. I travel a lot. I'm in hotels 30, 35 plus times a year. Man, do I miss my Win 4. So, but let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comment section down below. We just kind of tried to dabble. I feel like I've rambled on far too long for this video. Um, but let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. We are going to go in depth into every one of these chips. Talk about architecture, performance per dollar. Talk about efficiency per dollar. And we're going to do a bunch of slides. I absolutely love Gamer Jesus, uh, Gamers Nexus, if you don't know who I'm talking about. And they're just absolutely absurd in depthness into things. And I want to do that in a mini series for all of these chipsets. So, but keep in mind, it's not all about the chipset. It really, at the end of the day, it could be 9,000 other things that you hate about a device. So you don't use it and you sell it because you don't like the ergonomics or you don't like the trackpad or you don't like the sticks or even the RGB. It could come down to something that simple. So, but let me know what you guys thought about in the comment section down below. I also picked up an Anerbic, um, oh, what is that? It's a G556, I believe, pre-sale. Um, it is going to be my first retro handheld, all because I like watching retro handheld corpse or retro game corpse is the name. I'll link that channel in the comment section down below. We're gonna do some content on that. Um, I think that's going to be really interesting. So let me know what you guys think about retro games, retro handhelds, and so on in the comments section down below. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.